Yeah. All right, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You want me to talk to the camera? Right to or? the camera. Okay, good. Uh, my name is Bob Pugh. I'm a freelance videographer in Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been doing this for uh, just about 20 years now. Um, I do it for most of the TV networks and the local TV stations, uh, and I do take assignments as, uh, as they come. Uh, what names from news agencies maybe that you've done? Oh, I, uh, CNN, uh, NBC, CBS, ABC, um, all the affiliates. Um, I shot a freelance video yesterday for K, uh, B A K in uh, California in, uh, for a funeral from Arlington Cemetery for one of the uh, soldiers that were killed in, uh, in the Gulf War. Um, I also do training videos for groups uh, that, uh, that need some of my material. Uh, most of it is live action, so it's real time. Uh, that they utilize uh, quite often in, in their work as well. All right. So, uh, what were you doing on September 11th? Uh, well, I'd gone to work in the morning, um, as I normally do. Um, I grabbed a cup of coffee on the way in. Uh, another day as usual, it was bright sun, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, for September, that was kind of unusual, uh, being as warm as it was. Um, I went to my office in Alexandria, Virginia, where um, I usually monitor several radio frequencies in the area for opportunities uh, for me to do some business and videotape some of the action in town. And about, uh, I think about 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.15, uh, some of the folks in the office were telling me that they had heard of a plane that had impacted one of the World Trade Center towers in New York. So we switched our uh, radios over to, uh, to the AM radio news stations in Washington, WTOP in particular. And we were listening to that commentary uh, when, uh, you know, and monitoring the radios and you know, answering emails, doing daily business. Uh, when all of a sudden we heard that there had been a second plane or a second impact at the, at the second tower. Uh, and being uh, curious as I am, that just didn't sound quite feasible to me. So, uh, and being in Washington, D.C., you know, we figured in the climate that we understood that was in the world, it occurred to me that that, was, uh, that could be a, a coincidence, uh, not. So I began listening a little more closely to my radios um, about 9.30, and, and in fact it turned out to be about 9.38, um, I overheard the Arlington County Fire Dispatcher dispatch a battalion chief to an aircraft that was down in the vicinity of the 14th Street Bridge. That's one of the bridges that crosses the Potomac um, from Virginia into, um, into Washington, D.C., uh, and right into the middle of town. Uh, it was, incidentally, the site of the Air Florida crash uh, in 1980 uh, during the winter. Uh, so I was very familiar with the location and logistics of how to get there. So I immediately left my office and began moving in that direction. Um, as I exited the office, I, could, I was monitoring the same radios um, and notifying the TV stations uh, that are my, my customers of what I was hearing and when. About that time, uh, they started uh, relocating the impact site and getting a little more um, specific. Uh, and they said it was in Del Rey, which is a neighborhood south of Crystal City, south of the Pentagon, south of the 14th Street Bridge. And that's an area that I was moving toward. Um, and I knew it couldn't be there because the smoke and fire that I was seeing myself was far in the distance from that location. Uh, as again, we got closer, uh, the location became the Navy Annex, which is a government building that sits on top of a hill that overlooks the Pentagon adjacent to Arlington Cemetery. That could be a little bit uh, more likely. That was the direction of the smoke that I was seeing as I moved forward into the area. But as I got uh, down toward the Pentagon and parallel to the actual Pentagon itself, I could see that the building itself was on fire. There were people that were leaving the Pentagon, moving across the overpasses into the parking lots, getting away from the building itself. Um, I was beginning to pass the action myself, so I uh, took it upon myself to go ahead and make a U-turn across the median strip. I uh, exited, made a right-hand turn up the wrong way ramp, and came right up into the area of the impact, parked my car, and got my equipment and left. Uh, I began videotaping immediately as I moved into the area. Um, there was a gentleman in a suit, um, and looking at the uh, looking at the video, uh, he appears to be Middle Eastern, uh, probably an employee of the Pentagon, was handling some of the wreckage, a small mechanical arm of some kind that had a joint attached to it, um, indicating his uh, his idea that it may have been part of a landing gear. And there was some discussion amongst the other uniformed military people that it was too small, but nevertheless it was a 
just a small piece of, of, uh, of obviously something mechanical. I moved away from there and began shooting the scene um, from actually the northeast of the Pentagon itself down the face that was on fire and the firefighting that was going on. Um, there is in my video a, um, a clip I actually have a battalion chief from Fort Myer putting a, an air bottle on his back in discussions with him. He has indicated to me that he put that air bottle on five minutes after the impact. So uh, that helps me with my timeline and my thoughts. Um, I figured I would be moved, better off moving toward the fire itself. Uh, no one was in control of the area. Um, I had free reign. Um, I know better than to get in the way, so I tried to stay away from any of the actual firefighting or life saving. I did photograph and videotape some. Um, some of the medic units treating some of the injured uh, immediately and uh, as I moved forward. Uh, moving behind the ambulances, I was able to get a good shot of a gentleman on a stretcher uh, that was being, it was pretty badly burned being put into the, in the ambulance. Uh, he was asking the people around him to tell his family that, uh, that he was okay. Um, as I moved further still, um, I was focusing on the impact site and the firefighting directly across from the fire engine and the the control tower at the heliport. Um, all the while I'm looking for, and again, seeing videotape and photographs and reading uh, information about airplane crashes, I'm looking for wreckage. Um, and I don't see anything discernible. I can't find a piece of anything that I recognize. I can't see the tail, I can't see the wheels, I can't see the engines, there's no chairs, there's no luggage. Um, there's no logo. I mean, for Air Florida, when we shot that, we could see the logo of the Air Florida plane. Uh, you know, there was identifiable structure that you could see um, with that kind of an impact in that aircraft. I moved along. Um, I did photograph a lot of the, the actual people began to organize themselves. Uh, there was some stretcher bearers with some backboards moving into some organized line. Um, I believe they were attempting to go back in the building to do some rescue. Um, this was before the collapse. Uh, and they were mustering at the uh, burned out fire equipment on the heliport um, concrete pad itself. And there's some, in there's a lot of debris in the foreground of those videos. Again, it's very small pieces. I mean, I'm standing on pieces, a dinner plate or smaller in size. The largest piece I believe I saw was maybe two by three feet and it was crumpled. Um, I believe that is the piece that everybody sees uh, with a blue stripe. Well, or it, it had red paint on it, red logo, red a red stripe. Uh, again, I didn't dwell on that. I, there was there was a lot going on. Um, I noticed the clergy were beginning to show up, um, and I figured that was something that would be um, valuable. I videotaped the gentlemen from the churches and from the different religions trying to figure out what they were going to do. The uh, foam trucks were beginning to show up from National Airport. Um, they were beginning to start their firefighting and after the dispatches came through that it was a plane, I'm sure they came because of the fuel. Um, what I was seeing immediately was they were pouring water into a um, into the actual firefighting itself, which um, I believe probably spread the fire deeper into the building. I just carried it further and further along. I don't know that for sure, but it sounds logical to me. There was no foam and there was no actual um, fuel fighting going on at that time. Um, I saw the first helicopter land. Uh, it was to my immediately to my right. It was the Park Police Eagle. Uh, he landed um, on the road itself that was uh, going up into the Arlington area. Uh, as I saw the actual pilots and crew start to motion, I turned to my right again and saw a severely burned patient on a gurney pass me. Um, I couldn't even I couldn't tell who he was. He was burned that badly. He had no shirt. Uh, and he was moving it, moving his hands, I'm thinking, uh, maybe either in shock or, or what. One of the first, and I believe one of the only patients that was medevac that day that survived. Um, and I do believe I have his name somewhere, as Carlos, I believe something. There were articles written about him and his recovery later on. Um, about the time I was film, filming him being loaded into the, uh, into the ambulance, I heard a crunch and looked back to my left, and the Pentagon, actually the, the floors were collapsing right across from where I was standing. Uh, the video that I was able to get of that shows the debris and the smoke coming away from the building as it's being pushed away. Um, now your video has the best shot of the hole for video evidence. Best, hands down. How big, now you were right up there, how big was the Pentagon hole? How big could it possibly be? I would say, I would say if it was 16 feet diameter, 
20 feet tops. Again, I, I, I can't, that's what would start me so curious, as I was trying to find something, there was no marks on the, on the, on the grass. It, something never hit the ground. the ground. It didn't hit the heliport. I mean, it was a, a precision um, or awfully lucky hit. I mean, I, I don't know how it didn't bounce. I don't know how it hit directly in the side of the building without touching the ground, going as fast as it obviously was going. Um, but I can't believe the thing is is more than a garage door. You know, I mean, it, it, it was uh, the firefighters are standing in front of it. Um, they're looking up at it and they're just wondering, you know, wonder what's behind it, wonder where it went. Um, and again, I'm looking at uh, the classic airplane crash has wreckage. 